There are many conspiracy theories pertaining to hidden ancient relics which can be found upon our moon. Conspiracies plague not only the known visit to it, but also the possible past visitation by a now lost civilization. A number of studies, including some here upon our channel, have exposed not only theories but valid proofs to support the hypothesis of ancient ruins not only being present on the moon, but ancient lunar ruins having actually been visited in secret operations by NASA and other space agencies. Not only aware of said sites, but accused of studying them in secret. However, a discovery has been made which has seemingly been a lot more difficult, apparently impossible to keep concealed. Thus, it has been exposed after having been discovered by a group of intellectuals at the Baylor University, featured within a study published in the journal Geophysical Research Letters. They combined data from NASA's Gravity Recovery and Interior Laboratory GRAIL, and the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter LRO, after finding a huge blob lurking over a hundred miles beneath the South Pole Itkin Basin. Imagine taking a pile of metal five times larger than the Big Island of Hawaii and burying it underground. That's roughly how much unexpected mass we detected, said Peter B. James, assistant professor of planetary geophysics at Baylor University. The basin near the bottom of our sole natural satellite is an oval-shaped crater several miles deep and up to 1,242 miles wide the largest found upon the Moon. Located upon the Moon's far side, also known as the dark side, it never faces the Earth, permanently concealed from the world, it's an ideal place for future investigation by secretive agencies, as the far side would make an ideal location for any base development that one wished to keep hidden from the world. However, the metal object which is of an incredible size, is yet to be identified, and if it has been found already by secret intelligence upon Earth, it has until now remained unmentioned, and as far as anyone knows, unstudied. One of the explanations of this extra mass is that the metal from the asteroid that formed the crater is still embedded in the Moon's mantle, said James adding that the crater is believed to be 4 billion years old, almost as old as Earth itself. This means that if this was indeed left by a craft, the beings who made it would now, if still in existence, be unimaginably more advanced than the modern man of Earth, and could, in all possibility, still be visiting our solar system. Was this crater created by a metallic craft? If so, who were these beings? Were they interdimensional or merely interstellar travelers? It is an anomaly like many others within our solar system, which we find highly compelling. Since the incident at Roswell, many UFO enthusiasts have been certain that Earth has been visited by extraterrestrial beings, many claiming that the incident was indeed a UFO crash and that the U.S. government not only covered the event up, but seized the craft and have been busily attempting to reverse-engineer this technology ever since. These claims have been verified by a number of claimed whistleblowers who say they have worked on such projects at none other than Area 51 at Groom Lake. Since these claims were made, the CIA, along with many other bodies of U.S. government, have begun to release hundreds of files including witness testimonies of countless military personnel and civilians, testimonies in satellite and radar tracks made by individuals who have either had an encounter or have experienced unexplainable events connected to mysterious craft, often moving at seemingly impossible speeds or shutting down missile silos. These events would undoubtedly be a worry to the powers that be. The concern is that a hostile nation may have developed or successfully reverse-engineered these technologies in secret. However, there is also overwhelming evidence to suggest that these sightings were not of man-made craft, but indeed that of extraterrestrial life. For not only are these craft witnessed over sensitive military complexes, 
but a number of experiences have also surrounded schools, two of which we thought were compelling enough to bring to the forefront of our studies, this due to the number of eyewitnesses and what their testimony suggests. Although the accounts from a school in Zimbabwe were initially discredited, regardless of the fact that over 20 students witnessed a craft land in the school field, with the students subsequently going to meet the landing craft and being no more than arm's reach from the beings that emerged, many scientists and psychologists have attempted to discredit the event by putting it down to mass hysteria. The witnesses to this event continue to argue that it did indeed occur. Furthermore, supporting their claims, other encounters have been experienced at other schools around the globe. At approximately 11 a.m. on Wednesday, the 6th of April, 1966, students and a teacher from Westall High School in Australia reported seeing a flying object, described as a gray or silvery-green saucer-shaped craft with a slight purple hue and about twice the size of a family car. According to the students, the object was descending, overflew the high school, and disappeared behind a stand of trees. Approximately 20 minutes later, the object reportedly reappeared, climbed at speed, and departed towards the northwest. Some accounts describe the object as being pursued by five unidentified aircraft. Thanks to these, and thousands, possibly millions of other testimonies from people of countless disciplines, the acceptance that these craft exist has been forced upon the U.S. government and other governments globally. It would seem full disclosure, rather than the trickle we see now, is not a case of if, but is now one of when. It is a pursuit of truth which we find highly compelling. There is a very interesting patent recently acquired by the U.S. Navy, one with the potential capabilities to fulfill or rather stage a conspiracy theory, which has circled the web and books alike for decades. That being a false flag alien invasion. What's more, this patent also includes a technology that could amplify a voice over a vast distance, as if one were hearing the voice of God himself. It is a laser technology, whose invention, release, and patent all made under the possible guise or actual real-world advantageous purposes in its military applications, it creates a heat-seeking deterrent, or more specifically, a holographic craft, not only derailing said heat-seeking missiles, but could also explain many of the recent military UFO sightings, as this technology has potential only limited by the projectable power of the technology itself. Anything could seemingly appear in the sky as if real. If you add to this the ability to convey a voice over a vast distance, this technology could indeed be used to create a mass false flag incident, in particular a mass UFO sighting, or an attempt to fake a rapture within religious sects. The nefarious possible uses of this technology is wide-ranging. Yet one saving grace is the U.S. Navy's declaration of the ownership of such technologies, a move we find somewhat reassuring. Yet, as always, this new patent is not the only reason for the creation of our video today. For although many, if not all UFO sightings now can be written off as a possible holographic operation, it does not explain their presence within ancient art. The testimonies and compelling evidence put forth by remote tribes, most notably the Dogons, and their reoccurrence and claim visitation of Earth throughout history, even into the Renaissance, present within certain masterpieces, not to mention the curious illustrations made in the stones of Mesoamerica, all of which predate this technology by centuries, and in some cases millennia. Thus, the question remains. Are we alone? A question which we find highly compelling.